Hey, what's up guys? I'm Break Torn and welcome back to Europa Universe House 4 as we are playing as Milan in the Emperor expansion. Alright, so let's continue with our war against France and their allies, uh, which again we got pulled into this conflict last episode. Help the Austrians out. Keep having this damn province here attacked. French are really keen on getting that province as you would expect them to be. Uh, we do have another blockade. We've got to deal with that same fleet that we attacked last time. Uh, so let's go ahead and get them destroyed uh, with our 16 ship galley fleet. And it looks like we should be able to catch them. Uh, they cannot get away fast enough, which is excellent. I think our high maneuver is the reason for that. Uh, we did capture one of their light ships. Okay. Uh, I want to say, yeah, that's. Our, our ship count is getting a little bit high here. Uh, so we'll just have the, the light ship stay here in, in port for now. Uh, we did also sink three galleys. Uh, or, no, no, excuse me. We sunk four galleys. Because, uh, yeah, that was one the one trade ship was what we had captured. And then we sunk one, one light ship and, and captured the other. Uh, so a little bit of war score there. Not a ton of war score from the uh, naval battles. All right, so let's go ahead and go here. We'll split off that light ship when we get here. And uh, let these ships here repair up. It does look like we have another blockade, perhaps? Okay, so you have these... Uh, okay, this is the French main fleet with their three heavy ships. Uh, so we're going to want to get fully repaired before we attack them. I am going to attempt an attack there. It's it's three heavy ships versus... and Excuse me, three heavy ships. And then there's also the, light, the eight light ships, which, are, you know, don't really... Uh, aren't going to be much of a problem here. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of the one light ship here. These guys are already all repaired. How are we doing on getting that uh, new galley uh, built? We've done it on 3rd of July, so we're not going to wait for that. So with these guys fully repaired, let's attempt an attack here uh, against the the French uh, main fleet. Now those are there's three heavy ships there, so this is going to result if if they uh, they stay to fight, which they're not going to. But if they did stay and fight, then this re would result in us losing some ships, but we should end up winning. Uh, I'm just trying to see where the, the end of our bonus is for the Inland Sea. That's right here. So if we can catch them there, then we will. Uh, but other than that, if they go further than that, then we are unfortunately not going to be able to do the, the battle against those heavy ships. Uh, so we did finish up uh, the siege here, which is helping them out. Trying to, uh, yeah, you can see that that made a big impact because this was, you know, this, or it is, excuse me, their capital. Uh, so that was kind of big on the war participation or on the war score. So we need to come over here now. You see that they have the large army here, which they're not super keen on attacking us. They've already just, just wrecked their previous units. They're down to 13,000 manpower. Uh, so they're going to have to start relying more and more on uh, mercenaries. All right, let's go ahead and take these back for the Austrians. Uh, and we might have to attack them here. It does look like they're going to go after that capital again. Uh, so that's a problem. Uh, well, we're already off over to here. So let's go ahead and try and get this province taken. Then maybe we'll help out here. Uh, they don't have... Oh, it looks like their garrison is already built up. Okay, never mind. I was going to say they didn't really have much of a garrison. But yeah, they're going to go after the, the city there again. Uh, let's see. They are taking back our provinces here now. So that's a problem. Uh, so we need to engage these guys. Uh, maybe we should wait until they get locked into going here. Uh, though we would get the penalty if we can't beat them there. First of March, yeah, we can't beat them anyway, so it doesn't really matter. What we can do is see if there's any way we can avoid the river penalty, which it does look like if we attack from there. We don't get the river penalty, so that's what we'll do. And then we'll see what they do, where they go next. Alright, so let's go and attack them. We'll see if they try and leave. Uh, we did get this province back. Uh, so now we're going to have to go after them here. Uh, again, let's take a look and see where we're not going to get penalty. Uh, so it looks like uh, we should be good. This is the, the river cross penalty if you cross this river here. Uh, so yeah, we are good. Uh, and we won't get any terrain bonus despite the fact that you know we're defending here because, you know, there is no terrain bonus there. Uh, so we will be outnumbered. Uh, and then they also have... A better shock general, which we have better fire general. So this is going to be a tough fight, guys. But I'm willing to do it because we need to stop that. And this is what we have. We have 20,000 men up here. So this that's our choice. We're about to have this battle over here. So we'll have two battles going at the same time. Two big battles. 
they did pull them out. That's excellent. Um, so yeah, that's overall good. Uh, see what happened with that. Okay, so they had to give war reparations. Okay, so got them knocked out of the conflict. Uh, so we should be definitely very close in numbers here. Yeah, you see, it's almost equal. Just about equal as far as the numbers that are in the actual army, or in the actual conflict. Uh, so here's this battle. Uh, we are going to get the train penalty. However, we do have the better fire general uh, and a better shock general. Uh, and looks like we got the better dice roll here. And of course, we have all these other benefits here. So I think we will win that conflict there. This one, though, harder to say. Let's try and do an attack here and see if uh, we'll see if it works. All right, so profiteering and Luca. Uh, so we say we must protect trade. Get those benefits. Yeah, that's what we'll do. All right, so it does look like we have won this conflict uh, very easily. Actually, looks like we won. Yeah, very well. Uh, so they've taken again a uh, stupid amount of casualties. What is this like 13,000 casualties? Uh, quite a bit compared to our like 1,000 something. So I mean, yeah, we're just bleeding them right now. Uh, it's just not going well. Uh, we're going to go after the provinces down here. Kind of move over this way as we were doing before. And uh, now we have this battle, which the Austrians might come and help because uh, it does look like we are going to lose this one. It's going to be certainly very, very close. Yeah, it's very close. I mean, we are causing them more casualties. You can see the whole front line is just decimated, and we won that battle. Again, from the very, very high casualties that we caused them. Uh, again, almost 11,000 casualties there for for about uh, you know maybe 3,000 something on our on our side. Uh, so that is a uh, result in their army having to take off here. I don't know if the Austrians are going to go grab that province. Looks like that's a no. Everybody is coming here to the capital. All right, so we've knocked them out of the conflict. Or no, they've knocked them out. The French did. Okay. And they did have to annul treaties with the Austrians. All right, let's go after that province next. And uh, we'll take this one as well. And this is all helping us with the Austrians. We are getting like opinion bonuses with them as well. Uh, and we just see here. Uh, yeah, the liberated our provinces and defended our provinces is giving us a nice uh, opinion boost and they should like us quite a bit uh, And yeah, we'll go ahead and accept that marriage Marriage offer and our legitimacy is slowly increasing. We're getting up there uh, It's still fairly low though, unfortunately All right, so we've taken back all those provinces. I guess we can come back home now uh, Yeah, let's go ahead and go back home We've already taken a lot of casualties overall from this conflict and I feel like we've, we've done more than our part. Uh, we won't take any of these since they are protected by that fort. Though have another army there. We might actually have to go deal with here. Yeah, I think we're going to have to fight them. And we are looking at the Venetian uprising happening. Luckily, we do have troops to put that down. And that is going to be here. So what we want to do is have them go there now in case the rebellion happens. Looks like it's supposed to happen uh, on average maybe three years or so from now. All right, so we could move here. Uh, there's not a fort there, so it was just whoever gets there first, we get the bonus, uh, which would likely be them. Uh, we get there on 18th of June. They get there on 11th of June. So yeah, we're not going to beat them there. I guess we'll go here. We're just going to see where they go next. All right, so they are trying to take these provinces back. Yeah, and they are sending just little armies here that will be able to take these since they're not fortified, which is a shame. It looks like we'll arrive here on the same day. And because they went there first, I think they'll, they'll get there first. Uh, we will not get a river crossing penalty. We'll just have the, the train penalty. Okay, they ended up not going there. Okay. Just trying to get these guys to engage us with as few penalties as possible. Uh, here we'd it'd be a close battle here because the, they would have the numbers, and I think they get there first as well. Yeah, they get there several days before us. Hmm. And I think we get a river crossing penalty going that way as well. So we'd have to go here to not get the river crossing penalty. Oh lord. Yeah, they are really set on going down this way. Don't know if we can beat them there. Uh, 7th of July is the earliest. We'll get there on the 6th of July, but they'll just stop moving. So that's what the problem here is. 
Yeah, they'll just stop moving. So we're just kind of like chasing these guys around right now. Which is unfortunate. Because they got an army up here taking uh, my province from us. So let's just take this province here. Let's figure out where the hell they're going. Yeah, so they did take that province back. So yeah, if they keep doing this, we're going to have a lot of difficulty holding provinces. Okay, so they're going to go after that fort there. Which is exactly what I want them to do. Just go after a damn fort. Uh, we'll go and attack these guys real quick. This will allow us to engage that army without having to fight the whole army, at least initially. It does look like they are coming here. Uh, we will get the, the terrain penalty here. Are we going to get a river crossing penalty? We will not. Uh, they got another army coming here, but hopefully the battle will be pretty close to being done by that point. Uh, I don't think they get a river crossing penalty going over there. No, they do. Uh, that army would get a river crossing penalty. They're going to send a lot of troops here. This is a big, big battle that will likely result in our eventual loss. We're going to get the terrain bonus here, though. Okay. Uh, so we'll get the terrain bonus. We'll get a river crossing penalty in our favor. Uh, oh, well, maybe not. Looks like they didn't cross a river. Okay, I must have just read that wrong. Okay, it seems there's a river crossing penalty if you go from this province to this province, but not vice versa. I thought that was always the case, but if you got to go in one way, you got to go in the other way as well. Uh, so because they have, you know, attacked us when we had just gotten out of battle here, uh, we are at a disadvantage. Uh, you know, they, they do have a worse general. It's just going to be too many troops. We're just not going to win that. So this will force our retreat, but only after we have killed a stupid amount of their, their units. Uh, they'll lose a lot of manpower from that. Uh, it does look like this guy being here is ticking down the rebellion chance now. And yeah, we are definitely going to lose that. Though the Austrians are coming. If they get here in time... Which it does look like they got here in time. Alright, so we're not going to lose it. Uh, increased demand for books. Uh, so, if we did this one here, we would get regulated economic growth until 1551, so 10 years. And very good modifier here. It's a local modifier. But yeah, very good. Uh, or we do this one. And we could lose base production or get... Onion. Okay, that's just terrible. So we'll go with this one, guys. Uh, so with this option here, you get uh, a prestige modifier. It cost us admin power and money. Yeah, we'll do that one. Okay, guys. So I think that we will win this conflict now. This battle. Uh, yes, we did. And they took a stupid amount of casualties, as you'd expect. Uh, so can't. I keep forgetting that you can't sort this by who took which casualties uh, but all that's not ours since the Austrians were engaged in the battle as well uh, but overall yeah they lost uh, a lot of troops a lot of troops guys and our leader is that the leader here yeah our leader got the defensive planner which gives him shock damage received negative 10 percent uh, so very nice we'll take less casualties so with that win uh, we have pushed the French out of our occupied territory here and um, that allows to continue attacking provinces that aren't covered by forts which would be that one there this one is all covered by forts these ones are as well not a lot of options if we don't want to take forts right now uh, but yeah that's that was a great battle that worked out definitely worked out in our favor and it looks like we're gonna catch that thousand men too a little bit easily destroy oh maybe not or the austrians did it it looks like the austrians did it all right, so the Austrians are pushing forward now. Let's we'll see what they do. Uh, but I really hope they do something with this treaty. It better not be a white piece after all this work I did. Uh, you know, we have 19% war score. I know it's a defensive war, so I don't know how much they're going to be interested in doing. But, you know, I, I really hope that something happens. Something comes out of this. That we reduce France's power in some form or capacity. Uh, just because, um, you know, we're just going to end up having to keep fighting them. If they, if they don't do something in these treaties. Uh, so you can see that they came back over here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to finish the siege up. And then we're going to come over here and try and engage that army. Though it does look like the Austrians are are chasing them. Maybe not. I'm not sure what's going on. We will see. Uh, but I'm going to see if I can't catch that, that army. And get them destroyed. They will take that province from us before we get there, of course. Unless we force them to leave. Nope. They did leave, but not before. Yeah, it does look like they're trying to get out of here. Yeah, we can't catch them, so we'll just finish the siege up then. Just for now. We could become the defender of the faith that we so desire, which would actually uh, have the additional benefit of, of uh, you know, besides the fact that we get the bonuses, that we take those bonuses from France, because I think France is currently the defender of the faith. 
Uh, naval Thought Suffering, so we lost some Dipple Power. We just cannot get that stacked. Uh, I keep getting events that take the Dipple Power for whatever reason. All right, so we've occupied that province again. Uh, and it does look like there's big battles up in the north. And, and France continues to defeat our rivals, man. Uh, our rivals just have not been having a lot of success. Or, excuse me, continue to defeat our allies. That's what I meant to say. It'd be a good thing if they're defeating our rivals. Uh, we could attack there without a fort taking it. And yeah, we could actually go all the way up through here if we wanted to. Yeah, so we're going to attack right there. Um, it does look like, yeah, they're probably going to come marching down here with a large army. Seems to be what's about to happen here. Yeah, they're bringing a big army down here. And we just have not been able to get this uh, war finished up. We'll go ahead and do this here, and then maybe we'll attack right there. Uh, you know, there's no penalties here in regards to the terrain. So they wouldn't be getting those. But where can we attack from safely without getting any terrain, uh, any uh, river penalties? It looks like we'll have to go to this province first. Okay, so we'll take this, move this province, and then attack those French troops there. All right, so we got the Cardinal Administer event again. Uh, he's ate us as well so far, so let's get uh, us. So let us get the formality over with. Uh, the church will get the five influence, and then we'll get that Cardinal Administration. Uh, which is largely good until you get the bad events where you have to remove them, but yeah, that's fine All right, so now let's go ahead and go over this way And then maybe we'll attack that that army there. That's on that fort. Uh, they are bringing more troops down here that we're gonna have to deal with Let's see if they leave they do not okay, so we will attack them And should hopefully get an easy win here Yeah, kill a bunch of their troops New thinkers arise, uh, so we can level three naval reformer, which gives uh, morale and navies plus ten percent. I forgot all about our fleet. We need to take a look at that. Uh, and he is a fifty percent cheaper. But again, yeah, we don't. We already have somebody uh, for that advisor category. So where are? Oh yes, that's right. We chased these guys down here, and now we have this locked down. Uh, so they wouldn't be able to come through here anymore. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep those guys there. So they, uh, they can't come through here without fighting us. And then we're going to take any galleys that we have here, uh, which it looks like we don't have any. Uh, oh, nope, my bad. We have two galleys here. Oops. Get these galleys going over here and merging with those for 18 total galley ships. And I suppose we can go ahead and, and let our ships go back out and trade because we do control the seas now. Uh, so we actually have uh, another light ship to send out there. Oh, we have these light ships too. Uh, that's right, we, we're not doing anything with those right now. So we're gonna merge these, and then figure out where we want to have them protect trade. Where would be the most profitable for us? It looks like uh, yeah, Alexandria is still the most profitable, but we do we, we had to pull those guys back since we don't have supply here, and we still don't. So Alexandria won't be an option. So basically, we can trade over here. I think this would probably be the best one here, though, Ragusa. So we'll do it there. So they'll patrol over there for us. And hopefully they should all earn us a lot more money. And we had another battle over here. That's right. I forgot we were doing this battle. Uh, so we've gotten the win there. Uh, more French troops killed. They've got to be out of manpower, you'd think, at this point. Well, they have 13,000 right now. All right, so they're attacking our all these provinces down here. We're going to come back down here now. And great expectations. Anything for our dear queen consort. Uh, the crown will pay off some of their debt. We'll lose, you know, the money obviously and pay off the debt. And the Della Rocco family will remember that we came to their help. Yeah, we'll do that one. Help out the queen's family, I suppose. We got the money. We're sitting on it. Nothing else to do with it. So I mean, we could we can construct more buildings. We've kind of been distracted with this conflict though. All right, so yeah, we control the Mediterranean. That is an awesome development. It's going to help us out a lot. Um, I don't know if we're going to take any attrition in any of these zones here. Let's just take a look. It looks like we should be good to go. Yeah. All right, excellent. And declining power of the nobility. We've gotten that event many a time before. All right, so let's go ahead and merge all these guys. Now we have 18 war galleys, guys. 18 war galleys, and we can keep the French from entering into the Mediterranean at, at all. Uh, which is very good. Uh, so let's go ahead and attack. We're going to attack these guys here. Um, this will give us the, the month tick. And so we are back up to almost 19,000 strength. Uh, this province is 
you know, one where we do get the terrain penalty. And we're going to fight a lot of troops here. Um, can we stop? No, we can't stop it. So we're just going to have to do it. And it looks like we'll likely lose this conflict now. Because, uh, yeah, they have all those troops coming there. So, yeah, this will be a big battle uh, that we will lose. We're going to get the terrain penalty and we got a crossing penalty. I was thinking we didn't get it. Why didn't we get a crossing penalty? Or why didn't they get a crossing penalty? When they crossed from here to here, they didn't get one. Yet I did. Huh. That's weird. That's yeah, really strange. I'm not entirely sure where that is, but with the two uh, penalties there, that will result in us definitely losing this. But again, they're going to take extremely high casualties. Uh, I mean, look at this. I mean, we took a total of uh, 4,000 something while they took, uh, you know, 12, 12,000. So three times the casualty numbers. Uh, but this will allow them to kind of dominate over here for a while, unless we were to bring this army in, which I suppose we could uh, bring this army in there. Uh, it's a decent general. He's not quite as good as this general here. Uh, but yeah, he's not not much worse. So yeah, let's go ahead and bring him in. Bring him over here just so that they don't, you know, <laughs> wreak havoc over here. Uh, they're down to 8,000 manpower. And yeah, they're starting to take the provinces back now. Uh, but again, we still have the, the war score there. If we get this here which they just don't have enough units there maybe we should send units over there I don't know all right so bringing our army in uh, they should be here soon still got a lot of manpower left yeah it's such a bummer they're taking all these provinces back from us though again it only takes a month to take each one back but uh, I'd prefer not to have to continue taking provinces we already took all right so we'll have to rebuild our strength up there that'll take a bit of time uh, these guys are almost here. Uh, they haven't taken any forts yet or even made a real attempt to take a fort. So, you know, their gains here are, are you know, temporary. And then we could engage this an easy battle here where we wouldn't get a river penalty. We would only get the train penalty, so we will take it. They might bring their troops back. By that time, it might be too late. Looks like uh, we weren't fast enough. All right, well, that's surprising because it did say that we were going to get there in time. All right, well, we'll take these provinces back. I'm not going to chase them right now. You know, we're not even going to catch them any damn way. So we'll take all these provinces back first. We'll only attack them if they try and take provinces from us. We'll let the Austrians deal with the situation up here. Uh, and we did lose one of our generals. Is it the general that was... Nope, that's the, the crappiest one. It's not a big deal. We're not even using him anymore since we don't have that third army. Eventually, we'll have to rebuild that, replace those losses we took, and it does look like the war is now over. I'm really interested to see what the total casualties are, and it's a fucking white piece. God damn it. All that work, and you get nothing from it. Uh, look at how many people died for a white piece. Uh, a total of 126,000 casualties on our side, and 197,000 casualties on their side. So, extremely high casualties for them. And as far as the ships lost, you can see that we lost three ships, they lost 16, so they lost a lot more ships as well. Uh, if we were to just compare our country to uh, their, you know, I guess we'll just compare us to France here. France, 156,000 casualties. We took 49,000. Almost as much as the Austrians. Yeah, I mean, we just took extremely high casualties overall. That's, that's a lot. Uh, quite a few casualties to get nothing in return. It's very unfortunate. We lost two ships. I'm just seeing who all lost the ships here. Okay, so that's it. Uh, th those, all that was lost? Oh, there's three ships. Okay. There we go, there's the other ship. I went right past him. So yeah, uh, we lost two ships compared to their 11. Uh, but yeah, the, the, we uh, played a huge role in that. I imagine we're gonna have a very good, or you'd think we'd have very good. Uh, no, we didn't even get any uh, trust for that. We got absolutely nothing for that conflict, man. I mean, we got this province here, but I mean, the, the, yeah, that's just frustrating. Uh, we had already got that province early in the conflict, so uh, yeah, that's just, that kind of sucks, guys. Uh, to get so little in return for our efforts. Yeah, I don't like that. Merchant is bankrupt. Let's do that one there. And let's go and get these guys uh, drilling. I need to drill them back up. After they took one of those losses there. Uh, so as far as aggressive expansion goes, we've got to burn off a lot, guys. Uh, so we're going to just spend a bit of time. Uh, you see that the people are starting to leave the coalition. So that's good. It looks like the king of uh, Spain has died, and they now have a regency for their child who is just born. Uh, so, very, very young. 
uh, and they're, they're going to take a very long time, I mean, uh, before they get a new ruler. Uh, our current heir is six years old, and he, uh, again, is, is better than his father, so that's what's important. So hopefully, uh, hopefully he doesn't come in, you know, after many, many, many years. Uh, what, what we need to do here, guys, is, and I don't know why I keep clicking on that. Every time I want to go into the military view. Uh, mothball all the forts. I don't have to pay for those. No reason for that. Also, we could pull our galleys back in, too. We don't need to pay for that, either. Uh, so, yeah, we can no longer... Rival them, I think. Is that what that notification was about? Yeah. Can't rival them anymore. Actually, this thing here is saying we can rival them, so I'm not entirely sure why that... No, they're pulled from us. Yeah, let's go ahead and, and change Naples to a rival. Uh, also... I almost want to make France a rival because yeah, I just don't, I just don't see us like befriending them. French is just too powerful to make friends with. Uh, I feel so. I kind of want to rival them instead of you know Bohemia or Lithuania, both of which I don't really care about. Probably Lithuania the most. Uh, so yeah, let's let's go ahead and change them up. Yeah, we're we'll gonna do that. Even if it does cop a little bit of dipple power, we'll go ahead and also end our embargo of them. We don't look like we'll be able to do that right now because our diplomats are all currently uh, busy. That one's idle because there's nothing for them really to do. Uh, so let's go ahead and revoke our embargo there. He has Lithuania, and then we're gonna want to embargo or yeah, embargo France. Uh, we cannot do that right now. We also want to embargo these guys if we can. It looks like we might still have. No, we don't have the Peace Street anymore. So yeah, we can still embargo them. So we'll want to do that uh, as soon as we have a diplomat. Um, okay, we gotta wait a couple days here. All right, this is gonna issue this embargo here. And we'll accept the royal marriage offer. All right, so they've been embargoed. Now we need to embargo France next. Uh, well, that's gonna take one more day. Oh, we can't embargo them while we have the truce. That's right, we knew that. Okay, uh, so power projection's at 36 right now. And we could have got a lot more if we had been rivaled with France at the time that we were warring them. Let's go ahead and mothball our galleys, and we're gonna pay for those. And again, just making extremely good money despite the fact that we're over here like drilling all our troops. I'm paying for them. Still making uh, very, very good money. And that is a lot. Uh, let's go and actually build some. We'll see if we can build any. Yeah, we can build troops up, obviously. We can get a whole another army here, uh, which we are going to want to do. Uh, and you know what? I don't see any reason to do it just now, though. We'll wait. We're going to wait a little bit. We could also just keep that open so that we could hire mercenaries if we wanted to, though that would reduce our professionalism, so it's something to consider. Uh, let's go ahead and get some buildings constructed. And figure out what we want to to get here. Again, there's not any really like optimal options right now. Like nothing that's gonna get us like a you know something really good. Uh, we do have the state the state house. Okay. And look here. I mean, we can always build these. These are again they're very expensive. They take a long, long time to earn their money back. Uh, manpower is always nice to have, I suppose. Yeah, I think we're gonna go with that one five hundred manpower building that we can build. Yeah, right here. I think that'd be worth it. Alright, so we'll get that going, uh, and then that's probably it for now. Alright, uh, so let's go back up to a faster speed here. And we are getting the bonus there from trading in glass. I don't know if I ever showed that before. I don't think I have. Uh, so let's go and take a look at that real quick. So essentially, eh, we need to go into the ledgers. Uh, but you can see here, if you want to see how large our army is compared to everybody else, it's so about 40,000. So even at 40,000, which is significantly smaller than what army used to be, uh, we are still one of the largest armies in the world. Uh, but yeah, we could build this up to like 60,000 and then we'd be the third largest army in the world if we wanted to do that. Uh, oh yes, that's right. I came in here to look at something. All right, so what I wanted to look at is the trade goods. Uh, so if you look at the, the strategic goods here, uh, the, each one of these trade goods gives you this strategic effect, this modifier here. Once you get a certain amount of the market share, uh, I don't know exactly what it is, uh, maybe 15% perhaps? Yeah, because that's the only one we're getting a bonus for, so I think it's 15%. Uh, 
uh, and then we were getting the glass one just a minute ago so uh, and now we're not getting it uh, we're getting the production leader one though we, we are the producing leader here we are the that means we produce the most uh, paper and cloth in the entire world so that also gives a, a modifier uh, you know what actually I think that's the production modifier we'll take a look at it uh, but we're getting the trading modifier here for wine, which gives us the national unrest of negative one. Uh, so we were getting the glass one, the diplomatic technology cost, but I think we just lost that. I think that's what happened there. Uh, but yeah, you can see, like, if we were to look at the, uh, the unrest here, you can see trading in wine has given us a negative one. Uh, but if we were to look, take a look at, like, the, oh, the cloth or something, something we are the key producer of. Uh, so production leader bonus local goods modifier produce modifier plus 10% because we're the production leader So we produce more simply because we uh, Are the leading producer in the world for that good. Uh, so that's one of those benefits uh, But yeah, we're also if we can get that other glass production one back up Then we would have a cheaper Diplo tech uh, so and which that's one of the things we're still trying to invest in right now We have some trouble uh, building this up because we keep having events uh, a lot of discoveries are spreading over to us. Uh, we're going to just take a look at the rest of the world and see what everybody's doing as far as colonization goes. The English have been focusing on Brazil. Uh, yeah, it does seem that... Uh, okay, I don't know. I was thinking that. I think Portugal was here, but yeah, this is one of the uh, native tribes there. So yeah, they have colonized there. Uh, as far as the rest of the world here, you see that... Uh, the rest of the New World. You see the Portuguese have made a lot of... Uh, progress here on colonizing the Caribbean. Uh, so yeah, they have their colony here and then we have New Grenada uh, over here It's like Venezuela or Colombia or part of I think it's part of Venezuela part of Colombia And they're there. Uh, so that's what Spain has done so far. Who's this? Is this France? No. Oh, yeah, that's France Okay, so France is colonizing here as well now we can't see what's going on in North America. Uh, doesn't look like there's anybody colonizing there yet. Uh, again, we can't be entirely sure though. We can't see though. Uh, we can see there, and then we can see that here in Africa, the Spanish are colonizing the coast. Again, though, we can't really see a lot of the coast though. Uh, and then here we have England. England has colonized right there. So um, you know the the typical trading countries, or excuse me, colonizing countries out there, but colonizing in different locations than historically. Uh, so we'll keep watching those and seeing uh, what they do, uh, following their progress. Uh, let's go and build, I guess we'll build another one of these, and it does bring the most money, of course, you know, it, it takes a very, very long time to pay itself off, uh, but we'll build it anyway. And these do allow us to produce more of that, uh, so it allows us to, like, continue to be the, the you know, number one cloth producer. Uh, we could also, you know, specifically build in places that are going to try and get us those modifiers. That's one thing to consider. Uh, so, like, we are looking at, you know, production leaders and seeing where how we could, you know, build up on this. Uh, you know, see where we can get to. Uh, so that's not going to work. So, we probably want to take a, take a look at it this way and see, like, how far away we would be from trying to seize uh, production of these. Yeah, see, we're pretty far away from getting the wine production. Just looking at other options here. Yeah, pretty far away from most of these, it seems. Yeah, I don't think we're about to get... I don't think we're about to get any of these, honestly. It doesn't look like it. Uh, the, the most likely chance here is wine. So if we wanted to, to build those manufactories in wine, then we can get to producing... Uh, we can get it up. Uh, as far as, like, the trade, though, like, if we wanted to, to increase here then it does actually help us to, to also build more goods there because this is the market share around the world. Uh, so yeah, we might want to go ahead and build in glass provinces, not just in cloth provinces. So maybe that's where we'll build the next one. I just kind of built it where we get the most money, but there are other factors to consider that maybe we should consider uh, because of the, the bonuses that we'll get. So maybe glass and what was the other one, paper? Uh, I think it was paper. Uh, we're already a leading producer in paper. Oh, okay, that's for the market share. Glass and wine are the two that we might want to, to build in. Uh, so, a generous tither. Uh, so, we can say the donation will surely save our souls. And then that'll give money to the, the courier. Uh, 
and we lose money, obviously. Uh, I don't know why they only get a hundred, but we spend four eighty four. <laughs> a little bit of money uh, was lost on the way, apparently, and then the clergy will gain some loyalty. Uh, we can say we can do this one, make a, a personal contribution. In which case, we grant the money, uh, but it doesn't come out of the the country's treasury, which. During this time, and this is something that E4 kind of struggles with, uh, during this time, for, for much of this time, the, the monarch's money was the country's money. I mean, remember, the government was just the king and the administration he set up around him and, and, the, and the, everything was under the king. Now, that would generally start to change, not in every country, but in several countries, during this period where, you know, they did start to split, you know, the royal finances from the country's finances. Uh, so they did start to split that, especially like in England. They kind of changed that up a little bit. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, the, the monarch's money was the country's money. Like he had, you know, the taxes went to the, to the king. Uh, so I don't really understand. I, I feel like Paradox doesn't really understand how this works. <laughs> how you know early modern government works they think that the monarch and their money is is different than the money of the country uh so that's the reason why you have this one it's coming from just imaginary money apparently uh, and then this case would result in us still getting the loyalty but the the nobles would be less happy not entirely sure why that would affect them that doesn't make any sense to me but you're not entirely sure why they would be angry about that or we can say this has gone far enough and lose papal influence uh, so, yeah, we don't have the money to do that one. Yeah, we'll do this one, whatever. I don't really care if the nobles are irritated. Let them be irritated. I think it is interesting that, you know, they are the most powerful, the, the clergy are. And we got that event. I don't know if that's why we got that event, but, you know, as they get more powerful, I'd like to see that where, you know, if an estate gets more powerful, you start to see, like, more demands and, and stuff from a request, you know, whatever. Everybody's leaving that coalition, which is great uh, as far as where we're looking because we don't have many years left before we lose uh, This This here agenda we have to get it done by 19 or excuse me uh, by 1550 something so Yeah, we definitely want to get this done soon. Oh It expires in 1548 my bad uh, So yeah, we want to get that done soon. Uh, remember, we're just trying to burn off the aggressive expansion before we do that though Right now we're at negative 31. Uh, probably gonna want to start this war soon though, because uh, yeah, time is time is ticking, guys. Uh, so I think probably next year we'll, we'll wait one more year and then we'll start start the conflict. Uh, there's something else that I got notified of, but I don't remember what it is. So I guess it wasn't important. We could go ahead and invest some points into here. And again, the clergy has quite a few points invested. They get more points invested as other people do, I think. Uh, but yeah, we currently have the second most, so we have 16% chance. Not a very high chance, honestly. We haven't looked at the Reformation in a while. Might as well see how things are going. Uh, and Naples is no longer a vowed rival. Again, we got that. I don't know why that keeps changing for us. Uh, but yeah, you can see that has spread a bit in Germany. And overall, though, yeah, it's, uh, Catholicism is still looking pretty powerful. Uh, let's go ahead and revoke the embargo. And we need to pick a new one now. And I think I said, well, yeah, I guess we'll have to do a Lithuania again, since they are our rival. Uh, I'm not really super interested in rivaling Lithuania. Could do Denmark as well. I suppose that'd be an option. Uh, I, I suppose we'll just do Lithuania, though. Well, you know what? This is what we'll do. Let's take a look and see who likes each of them, since it does have, you know, will affect us. Uh, so this, this helps. Well, no. We have to look here at the enemies. Uh, just Muscovy and Crimea. How about here? Okay, so in this case, I think we will do Denmark. Yeah, let's do Denmark. Why not? Now, how it makes sense for us to be rivaled with Denmark? It doesn't, but uh, neither did Lithuania. All right. Let's keep on letting it play here. Yes, that's right. I had something I wanted to do. And the Venetians have left the coalition, which is good. Uh, so we wanted to set up this free diplomat here. All right, we're still building the spy network in in Venice since we will be attacking them next year. And you know, let's go ahead and build. Uh, where is this here? Let's go ahead and build another one of these manufacturers. I wish it would show us here at uh, what per good we're producing. 
that'd be really nice. Um, but yeah, it doesn't. So we'll have to actually go. I know there's a way to see the goods. I don't know what it is. Probably economic mode. Trade goods. All right. So here you can see we're getting cloth from these ones. Yeah, paper from these ones. What are we more likely to get, the glass or the paper? I guess that's what we should look at. We don't really produce a ton of glass. I think Siena is the only province that has glass. So it would probably be, you know, we have more paper provinces. So let me just take a look and see which one we wanted to do the most here. So if we're trying to get the, uh, the production modifier, yeah, the only way we're really going to get that is with the wine. But if we're trying to do market share here, you know what? I don't know if we're actually getting this or not. It says we're getting the training bonus here. But yeah, I don't think we are. Let's just take a look. Because I saw that modifier pop up, but I don't think it you know tells you if you aren't getting it anymore. Yeah, it doesn't seem to. Let's just see here. Yeah, we're not getting the one for trading in glass. Okay, that's what I thought. I thought that little icon told you if you got it, and which we are not. So yeah, the idea here though is trying to get higher market share, because uh, yeah, we're never gonna get the production leader. So yeah, if we're trying to do that, oops. Then I suppose it will make sense to to try and, but you know, I don't know if we'll ever be able to to get it. We'll see, you guys. Uh, let's go ahead and actually we'll build that there, and. Maybe that might have an effect. Looks like there's no slots left there. Okay, so that's not an option. We have to actually do it in one of the the paper provinces. Uh, but that is not an option either because I'm not seeing any that actually have the ability to build there. Yeah, there's no uh, there's no provinces that we can build in. All right, that's unfortunate. So we could really only do cloth right now. That's the only ones I have openings, open slots. I mean, of course, could always go further into wine, I suppose. Uh, weren't we pretty close to being the producer leader of the wine? Yeah, we're pretty close, I think. So we could go and do wine, I suppose. Yeah, I don't know why I'm so, so focused on the paper. We're not going to get that high enough. Yeah, I guess we'll do the wine. So, no, sorry this is taking a little while, guys. I'm trying to find the best place to first invest in. All right, so these are the three wine provinces here. We also have one right there. So let's build it in one of those. So we can build it there, or we can build it there. Uh, this will get us the most money, so we'll build it right here. And that'll get us uh, you know, higher wine percentage there. Yeah, though it's, uh, you know, we're at like 10% compared to 15% for France, so it's gonna take a, a long time. We're gonna have to build a lot more if we want to try and gain control there and get that production modifier. It would be nice to have those, so we'll try for it. Uh, let's see what we wanna do. Let's just, uh, try to ease the tensions, increase relations with some of these countries. And I'll make it less likely we'll see a, a coalition form. Uh, and our king has got his new trait. He's secretive, which gives a plus 20% foreign spy detection. But yeah, France has like no manpower left, so I do expect that they'll probably stay out of conflict for a while. Uh, aggressive expansion's at 31 right now, so still pretty high, unfortunately. It looks like we lost uh, both of our generals at the same damn time. All right, well, that's unfortunate. Uh, yeah, that sucks. Uh, let's go and recruit. Oh, we actually had one general. Okay. Uh, so, I'm not entirely sure. Oh, was it the Admiral that died? It was the Admiral that died. Got it. All right, so let's go ahead and get uh, one of these guys assigned here. We'll do this guy here. This guy here. Keep him drilling for now. Not quite ready to go into conflict just yet. i to wait just a little bit longer here. Again, just trying to burn off some of that damn aggressive expansion. Uh, I guess we'll go ahead and move in place in preparation to attack. Uh, we're at 69 there, we're at 73 here. Uh, but he's the better general, so. And I already moved him there, so that's where he's going. We're gonna come on over here and get ready to attack them. We'll have to bring our fleet out. Uh, it does result in us having to destroy their fleet, which is unfortunate, uh, but there's really no way around it. Uh, so let's go ahead and have you guys drill just a little bit longer, like another month or so. Let's go and stop the drilling now, actually. So stop drilling, and then we're gonna want to unmothball this fleet here. So they can start uh, building back up. As far as declaring war, we don't have a diplomat to send, so I can't really see our situation there. 
currently trying to improve relations with outraged countries. Uh, let's go ahead and pull back our, our diplomats with the allies. And we lost a claim. Oh, okay, we lost that claim there. All right, that's fine. Just have to get it back. All right, so just kind of getting our morale built back up. We do have a diplomat to try and contact these guys and see who would come to their assistance. Looks like the knights and the papal states would come to their assistance. Okay, uh, so we will have to fight the papal states, which means our army here would have to be prepared for conflict before we declared war. Could do the... We're going to want to do the subjugation, that's right, because we're going to vassalize them. And that makes it a 50% cost. Yeah. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going we're to take the capital and, and force vassalization. Uh, we could bring Savoy in, which I assume we probably will. Yeah, we'll bring them in so they can help out. Um, and not that we really need their assistance, but... I mean, I guess there's really no reason to bring them in and use the favors, I suppose. Though, again, this is going to piss the Pope off, so... Yeah, uh, I hate that, that we have that issue. Uh, so, where do we want to attack Roma from? Where would be the best location? As I do expect them to probably honor their alliance here. Doesn't look like it matters for the most part. We can attack from right here and it'd be fine. So let's go ahead and go there now. Just give it a little bit of time here. We'll declare war in June. I think we should be ready at that point. Okay. Uh, so the army or our navy still isn't quite ready yet. I did forget that we're going to need to bring those out if we want to attack across here. So let's give it one more month. Uh, they won't be ready just yet, but that's okay. We can at least attack here. Although, they will probably bring this fleet out immediately. Okay, one more month, guys. One more month, and then we'll, we'll go to war. Against the Venetians and the Pope. It's an interesting alliance. All right, uh, so we should be ready now. Uh, these guys will still need another month to repair, but that's okay. We'll, we'll let them sit there for a month. If we can't invade here, we can't invade here. Let's just get this started before something changes. Uh, so let's go and declare war. And we'll bring Savoy in simply so that somebody else will piss the Pope off. And yeah, they did join, as you'd expect. So let's go and attack them now. And I'm gonna attempt an attack here, though it doesn't look like we'll be able to, not yet. All right, so the Battle of Roma is already done. Very easy battle overall. We did win a, uh, looks like we won a battle with our light ships. Okay. And uh, they're already attempting to go back in. I don't think that's gonna be necessary if we can just wait for these guys here to get repaired. So that we can attack over that way. It does look like there's nobody protecting this straight, so we should be able to go across now. There we go, excellent. So we didn't even need our fleet. I'd prefer to not destroy their fleet. So we're not gonna. But we might have to. Let's see what they do. All right, so that will force them out. Oh, wait a minute. Hold up. All right, so we, we destroyed their, their troops there. Pretty easy battle overall. So they are back out here. I prefer not to destroy them since we're vassalizing them, so I want them to have that fleet. Uh, so this is what we're going to do. We're just going to let them control the seas. It's fine, guys. They can control the seas temporarily. They can have it. And... And this fleet as well. Looks like they, all of our fleets already went back in. All right, that's interesting because we didn't tell them to do that. So we'll just let them have control of the sea. Uh, we would build a, you know, sieges down quicker. All right, so one of our generals is dead. Is it this guy here? Yeah, it's this guy here. All right, we'll just leave and then come back with a new general because this is just gonna be so much quicker. Uh, this guy's really good too. Oh, and we don't need all these troops here either. That's right, because they don't have, there's no other enemies. The knights have troops somewhere, uh, but we don't know where those are at. I do want to attack the, the papacy's ships here, though. So we'll go over here, and we could, uh, you know, stay here against Roma. Make that siege go a little bit quicker. Uh, so I don't know where the knights are, if they're going to be coming over here. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. You see Naples is having some problems with some rebels. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and, and split off the, the fleet here, detach the siege, and hold shift to keep the leader there. 
They have a total of 10,000, but I bet they don't have all the cav, or excuse me, all the artillery. I don't know why the artillery aren't favored. That really should be the case. I know I've said this before, but yeah, I think it's, I find it very strange that they don't do it that way. And they didn't keep any. They do make sure not to keep the, the, the cav in there because they can't really attack, but yeah, I don't know why they don't. It's just really strange to me. They don't consider, you know, the, uh, the artillery, the cannon. All right, so we got our 10,000 men there. Sieging there. Here is gonna be a similar situation. We should probably detach the siege. And it looks like they don't need very much here. I don't wanna leave these guys. And we can't leave anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, we can't leave because they do control the strait there, but that's okay. We do have the ability to invest into diplomatic technology. Uh, so I think we will. Yeah, get that naval morale up. And this sh uh, should speed the siege up by quite a bit now, uh, since we do have them blockaded now. Okay, excellent. So uh, yeah, we should be able to get this done uh, quickly. Uh, we've got the two plus bonus from our general. We have a one plus bonus for our artillery. We could get a two plus if we had one more cannon. We do need to get another cannon in our in our troops. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we have the, the negative three from them being blockaded here. Uh, so that, that'll progress very, very rapidly. Again, I don't want to destroy the Venetian fleet though, since we are uh, going to vassalize them. So it just makes sense to keep their fleet around. Uh, so the Siege of Rome is done, uh, so that's excellent. Now, if we were to annex Rome, uh, then this would cause a lot of issues. Uh, but if we ever want to form Italy, we have to we have to take Rome just temporarily. We can always give it back to the to the Papal States, which I think we get an event that requests that we do. Uh, but this is, I think, the only thing stopping us from taking this decision. So let me just take a look at here. It would have to be a core, though. So you'd have to first take it and then core it before you gave it up. And then that would allow us to change over to Italy. And then we get like new missions, a new, I mean, I'd have to look at these anyway, but yeah, the new ideals here. I, and I, I don't know if the, this idea group is better or if the other one is, that's one thing I'd want to look at. Also the missions, I'd be interested to see what the Italian missions are before we actually decide to do so, but that's something to consider. Uh, definitely something to consider. So we have pushed the papal uh, ships out. So we'll have a nibble battle, which will get us more war participation. I was waiting for that siege to be done. Uh, we did destroy all of their ships. They had, yeah, no chance against us. Uh, so let's go ahead and go back and repair these ships up. But yeah, now we're actually able to dominate the seas. Finally got enough galleys where we can really dominate the seas, guys. Uh, so this is actually where we're going to end the episode here. Uh, we almost done with the siege here. And uh, that'll allow us to seek peace with the Venetians, which if we're to look at what we want to do here. Uh, obviously, we're going to try and annex them, uh, or excuse me, vassalize them. Uh, so we'd vassalize them. They would not be willing to accept that, by the way. We haven't taken their, their uh, core, excuse me, their capital city yet. So as far as how much aggressive expansion we're getting here, it's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad at all. All right, excellent. Uh, so I'm not too worried about that then. Uh, but if we were to say also want to uh, conquer uh, Rome, we wouldn't even be able to do so. The war score is just uh, too high. Uh, Rome's apparently very expensive. At 71%, so you basically got it. Like, that's all you do in that conflict. Yep. There's also Crete, uh, but we'll leave that to them since they'll be our, our vassals. So that's pretty much all we're going to do. Uh, we could also seek uh, peace with them and force them to break their alliance with... I mean, I don't even know who would want them to break their alliance with, but we could do a separate treaty with them and uh, force them to, like, give us money... We could do like war reparations, force them to transfer their trade power. Uh, and then as far as again, the with the alliances, maybe the Hungarians or something. I mean, I, I don't know. There's a lot of options here. And make them revoke their core there. Yeah, that'd be a good one to do. So yeah, maybe we'll do a separate peace treaty with Rome first and then we'll do a treaty with the Venetians. Uh, yeah, I think that's what we'll do. Uh, but we'll do that next episode. I hope you guys did enjoy this one. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I do hope to see you guys on the next episode, uh, where we'll probably have an, another period of of uh, peace, uh, or trying to have peace if we don't get pulled in by the Austrians into a conflict. 
we're trying to have a bit of peace and, and burn off all that damn aggressive expansion we got. Uh, and you know we'll have a uh, we'll have that agenda finished, which is excellent. We'll be able to do another uh, do another one, I suppose, and see if we can't get that completed. Uh, but yeah, I will see you guys on the next episode, and thanks for watching.